My friends, this afternoon I have issued a proclamation calling a special session of the Congress to convene on Monday, November 15, 1937. I do this in order to give to the Congress an opportunity to consider important legislation before the regular session in January and to enable the Congress to avoid a lengthy session next year, extending through the summer. I know that many enemies of democracy will say that it is bad for business, bad for the tranquility of the country to have a special session, even one beginning only six weeks before the regular session. But I have never had sympathy with the point of view that a session of the Congress is an unfortunate intrusion of what they call politics into our national affairs. Those who do not like democracy want to keep legislators at home. But the Congress is an essential instrument of democratic government, and democratic government can never be considered an intruder into the affairs of a democratic nation. I shall ask this special session to consider immediately certain important legislation which on my recent trip through the nation convinces me the American people immediately need. This does not mean that other legislation to which I am not referring tonight is not an important part for our, of our national well-being. But other legislation can be more readily discussed at the regular session. Anyone charged with proposing or judging national policies should have first-hand knowledge of the nation as a whole. That is why, again this year, I have taken trips to all parts of the country. Last spring, I visited the Southwest. This summer, I made several trips in the East. Now, I am just back from a trip all the way across the continent. And later this autumn, I hope to pay my annual visit to the Southeast. For a president especially, it is a duty to think in national terms. He must think not only of this year, but of future years when someone else will be president. He must look beyond the average of the prosperity and well-being of the country, because averages easily cover up danger spots of poverty and instability. He must not let the country be deceived by a merely temporary prosperity, which depends on wasteful exploitation of resources which cannot last. He must think not only of keeping us out of war today, but also, out of keeping, uh, also of keeping us out of war in generations to come. The kind of prosperity we want is the sound and permanent kind, which is not built up temporarily at the expense of any section or group, and the kind of peace we want is the sound and permanent kind, which is built on the cooperative search for peace by all the nations which want peace. I want our great democracy to be wise enough to realize that aloofness from war is not promoted by unawareness of war. In a world of mutual suspicions, Peace must be affirmatively reached for. It cannot just be wished for, and it cannot just be waited for. We have now made known our willingness to attend a conference of the parties to the Nine Power Treaty of 1922, the Treaty of Washington, of which we are one of the original signatories. The purpose of this conference will be to seek by agreement a solution of the present situation in China. In efforts to find that solution, it is our purpose to cooperate with the other signatories to this treaty, including China and Japan. Such cooperation would be an example of one of the possible paths to follow in our search for means toward peace throughout the whole world. The development of civilization and of human welfare is based on the acceptance by individuals of certain fundamental decencies in their relation with each other. 
and equally the development of peace in the world is dependent similarly on the acceptance by nations of certain fundamental decencies in their relation with each other. Ultimately, I hope each nation will accept the fact that violations of these rules of conduct are an injury to the well-being of all nations. Meanwhile, remember that from 1913 to 1921, I personally was fairly close to world events. And in that period, while I learned much of what to do, I also learned much of what not to do. The common sense, the intelligence of the people of America agree with my statement that America hates war. America hopes for peace. Therefore, America actively engages in the search for peace.